I'm interested to hear like your experience of scaling this online business. Like what was a surprise for you? What was like a direct takeaway from like, ah, I learned how to do that in the mortgage business. It's just, it's just applying it to another business model. Like what, what's, what's been the takeaways, the successes and the failures? So there's a lot of great business books out there, but I think the ones that most pertain to how I run my business, there was a book called Rework. The guys that started Basecamp, which is the, uh, it's actually the project management system that we use. They did blogs, you know, years and years ago, and they did a whole bunch of them. They put them together into this book and they called it Rework. And the Rework idea was that you kept your business small and lean and you could move faster. Whereas we talked about like Encompass, where it's so big and so bloated. Look at Microsoft. I mean, they're huge and, you know, they just, they, they can't make changes. They can't turn on a dime. So Rework was always that philosophy. We try to keep our business small. I try to reward the people that work for our business. My personal idea of how I want people to be paid, I always, I always pay on how the company does for revenue. So there's always a, a, a base plus compensation based on, on how the company does as a whole. Not even things on that individual. Like you may want to pay, I've got people that do the onboardings, those 90 minute calls that, that you were talking about. And I could pay and say, hey, if you do, you know, every one of those, I'm going to give you 50 bucks. The problem is if our team, if, if I need them to, to give attention to something else and I'm taking them away from onboardings, well, then I'm taking money out of their pocket. But if I pay them on revenue, everything that they do that helps the company helps them. And everything that everyone else does helps them. So I like to, to always pay on revenue. I keep my team small. Um, we try to make sure that you've got cross, you know, cross training so other people can do other people's jobs. And then the other, the other great book is probably Michael Gerber and the E-Myth Revisited. So that's the idea of the owner, the manager, and the technician. And just being clear, no matter what kind of business you run, where you know where, what are those roles? What are the technician roles? Even if you're the owner and the manager and the technician, you know, I think he uses Sarah's Pie Company as the initial like kind of the example he uses. And you just kind of frame out what are those different positions. And as the owner, I am currently doing the you know the demos, or I used to do the onboardings, and then I yeah. hired somebody, and now they do all the onboardings, and you know, and, and then I started doing all the demos, and now I'm like, okay, I don't want to do the demos anymore. It's too much technician work. It's spending all my time. I'm not able to to have a vision for the company because I'm I'm too busy with technician work. So then you hire somebody, and and you fill that box. So I think Emith Revisited was a is a fantastic book with Michael Gerber. Um, it, it it focuses on processes for a consistent an experience, which is something that we built our business on, that experience, your onboarding experience. Um, and that's also, we, we focus on that consistency. If I'm going to take on a new member or a new client, they have to fit into our system. We don't fit into theirs. If someone says to me, well, we need you to do this differently, then I say, I appreciate that, but maybe we're not the right company for you. Because as much as I want to work with everybody, if it doesn't fit into our system, we can't scale. And that was something that I fought my right-hand guy, Tom, with for a long time. I wanted to be everything to everybody and find a way to make it work. And we're going to customize this and we're going to do that. And instead, it's, nope, this is what we do. And this is why it works. And when someone's like, or like you, and Scott's like, I don't like your memes. And I'm like, that's fine, but they make your phone ring. So this is what we have. And yeah. if you don't, you know, this is how they work. And that's it. And that's kind of how we roll. And, and that, that has been very valuable because it stopped the distractions and allowed us to just scale faster. So keeping a lean team. Um, having processes and being, you know, just being true to your processes and scaling and not, not making changes and not going off your script, staying on what you do well and, and letting people, you know, every time someone comes to us and they're like, well, other people have that website. And I'm like, yeah, they do. And you know why? Because we know it works because we have all the analytics and the heat mapping. That's where we can tell where people click on. And we have all these results. We're able to Basically, it's like group share. You know, we have 300, 400 people that have these results. So you're doing it by yourself. But we know this works. Why am I going to give you something totally different? Unless we're testing it, why, why would we give you something totally different just because you think it looks good? Who cares what it looks like? You know, do you want your site to get you loans? So you got to know what that stuff's going to do. So that's what I would say for running any business. What I have learned is keep my team small because you want to remain profitable. And it's easy to get a bloated team very quickly. And then you're doing meetings and then all, you know, again, you have more people, but less revenue or the same amount of, you know, same amount of revenue and, and just more work. And, and then also just scalable and stay on, stay in your lane and with what you do well.